So in this week's video, I'm working on the radiator and the cooling system on this new buggy that I'm building. So how that's going to work is basically when I decided to change these lower tube lines in the chassis and move them in, I also decided to make it um, part of the cooling system and so the coolant will flow through that tube over to the radiator. I haven't done this one before. My other rock crawler right there has a front mount radiator so it just has very short uh, radiator tube. But those tubes going through the frame like that also kind of act a bigger heat exchanger too and as a big radiator. So um, I've seen a lot of other people do it this way. Um, I haven't tried it before so we're gonna see how it works. We have been super busy lately. Me and my wife both work full time. Uh, our kids go, are going to school and then after school they have soccer and then soccer games on the weekends and 4-H as well. So running the kids around, going to all that stuff, trying to find time to work on this thing and still do the maintenance to keep this thing on the trail and ready in between trips and editing videos. I've definitely uh, been very busy. <laughs> it's a, uh, I gotta do this, I gotta find any little, little piece of time I can to work on this stuff, but I'm in the final stages. Now it doesn't look like much, but what I've been working on is getting all the tabs and brackets in place. So I put things on, uh, line up, tack the tabs in place, pull it back off, then weld the tabs. And so I'm at the place where I don't have that many tabs left. And my goal is to get this thing a painted chassis all bolted together and, and pretty much a roller by the end of June. So we'll see if we can do that. I don't know if my other parts like axle shafts will be here in time, but I at least want to get that far and get everything bolted in and all final torqued by the end of June. So we'll see. So right here, this is going into how I designed and how I made these tubes part of the radiator system. So starting here, we're gonna move forward and see how that all came together because it happened over the course of a few months. It didn't all happen at once. So here's just a little time lapse of how that came together. So for my radiator mounts, I ordered some universal type radiator mounts from Speedway Motors. And how it works is the hangers just hold the bottom and then I made kind of a clip that holds the top in place with a couple quarter 20 bolts. So it's very basic, but it should be functional. So this is how the radiator will sit in there and how the fuel tank sits in there as well. I'm trying to keep everything as simple and as basic as possible. Um, it's not flashy, but it's it should be functional. So I cut out the tubes on the chassis and then I welded a piece of tube that will connect to the radiator hose for the radiator fluid to flow through. I also put a block off plate inside uh, the tubing so that the radiator fluid stops right there. Um, I've seen other people do it this way so I'm just trying to do the same thing. I notched the piece that will connect to the radiator tubing so that it fits over top of the tubing that I notched out. I then took the piece of tubing that I had modified and welded it back into the chassis so that the radiator fluid can flow through this. So I've been working on pressure testing this cooling system. So I've got the radiator going into, going into the frame basically running up to the front. And so um, this is the first time I've tried this before. And so what I've been doing is I have this, this bicycle tire with a Schrader valve, a bicycle tube with a Schrader valve, and then I pressurize it. And I pressurize the whole system and then I just take some soap bubbles and then uh, check for leaks. So like right here where it's getting all rusty, that's from me hitting it with uh, soap bubbles. 
just making sure I don't have any leaks. So um, by the time I fill it with coolant, I want to make sure that there's no, no leaks going on. Um, I also put some drains on this bottom tube on each side so I can drain coolant out from there. Um, I, I haven't tried this before. It was a bit of an afterthought. Originally, I wanted to put the, the radiator in the front and I ran out of room. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And we'll see how this works. So um, hopefully it works out. I had a few few leaks I had to address and I just took my MIG welder and just kind of went back over them and then repressurized it and uh, um, soap tested it again. Soap bubble checked and uh, so far so good. So um, just keep chipping away at it. So far I, I think I got the last of the leaks. So um, I'm going to consider that good for now. So this is what I've been doing. I've got my pressure gauge here. Um, I've been hooking it to that bicycle tube I got rigged up to the radiator. I just inject air into it. And then I just go to each of the joints that I've welded and then look for any leaks with soap bubbles. I got soapy water. Just make sure uh, if there's any air leaks, it shows up pretty quick and starts bubbling. So I think I've got them all about knocked out. Now, what I'm using as this, this kind of flexible type tube um, for some of my radiator tubing and basically it comes with these these rubber clamps that have these these different size type bushings that go inside of it and I haven't used this style before I'm also using in a few places I couldn't fit those just basic good old-fashioned radiator tube um, there are a lot nicer fittings that are out there that are available that are basically like big AN style fittings um, I didn't go that fancy I just uh, kept it really basic I will do videos in the future about how I'm doing the AN fittings for all the fuel lines and all the rest of the plumbing, but for radiator stuff, I'm keeping it super basic. So what I'm working on in the future, in my upcoming future videos are, I'm getting these drive lines in place, so building some DIY drive lines. I'm also getting the brake and the gas pedal and everything in place, so that'll be coming up as well. I'm getting all my brackets figured out from all the components on the front of the motor. Um, those are all getting figured out. So I got a whole lot of little projects that are all kind of starting to come together. So um, that I'm also finishing up my dash area with my transfer case shifters and all of that. So all of these like little projects are starting to come together and starting to move forward. So um, I'm just waiting on a few more things um, and then I'll be done with tab and tabs and brackets and then pull it all back off again, clean everything up. Uh, touch up some more welds and um, paint it and then start putting it back together. That's my goal.